Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're going to start on homogeneous ordinary differential equations, which is the first part of the section of substitution methods, because these are a little bit more complicated first order equations, and so in order to solve them, we want to get them into a simpler case that we know, so like uh, separable or first order, using a substitution that we'll know how to make given if we know that if we're in a certain scenario. So for here, homogeneous ODE, um, this is not the same as when we were doing homogeneous for classification of ordinary differential equations, which is on the right-hand side if it was equal to zero. This is, when I say homogeneous ordinary differential equation, for the sake of substitution, I mean if a function fxy, it's going to be homogeneous to degree k if inside that function fxy, if I substitute in a lambda x for every x and a lambda y for every y, I should be able to, at the end, pull out a lambda to whatever power it may be, times that uh, previous function x, y. If I can do that, then the equation is homogeneous. Great. So let's run through that real quick for this one so that you get kind of a gist of what it means for something to be homogeneous. So what I want to find is lambda f of lambda x and lambda y, right? So here that would mean, okay, lambda y for all my y, so y squared times lambda x minus lambda x cubed plus lambda y squared times lambda x divided by lambda y cubed. Great. So then, simplifying this, we'll get that this is lambda cubed y squared x minus lambda cubed x cubed plus lambda cubed y squared x divided by lambda cubed y cubed. And hopefully you're starting to see we can pull out a lambda cubed in the numerator. So lambda cubed times y squared x minus x cubed plus y squared x divided by lambda cubed y cubed. Right? Now, this right here was our f of x, y. And then lambda cubed divided by lambda cubed is going to give me a lambda to the zero. So this is a homogeneous of degree zero, which means it's homogeneous, which means we can apply the following method. If we now know that an ODE is homogeneous, then we should make the following substitution. Y is equal to UX. And then choose one of the following substitutions for your uh, derivative. If it's given to you strictly as dy dx, then it's probably better to use as equal to u plus x du dx. Or if they separate out the uh, differentials, then it's probably better to use dy is equal to u dx plus x du. So moving on, here's an example of an equation that we'd like to solve. So 3x cubed minus xy squared times dy dx or all over 3x squared y plus y cubed dy dx is equal to 1. Um, if you can't see that this is homogeneous, go ahead and use the definition that I gave you. Um, but as you can see, if you want to get the intuition for it, on top we have 3x cubed. That's going to produce a lambda to the, th to the third power. And then minus xy squared is going to produce a lambda to the third power, right? And then a 3x squared y on the bottom will produce a lambda to the third and then the y cubed on the bottom will also produce a lambda to the third. So lambda cubed plus minus lambda cubed on top will just still give me a lambda cubed. And then lambda cubed plus lambda cubed on the bottom will give me lambda cubed. Then lambda cubed over lambda cubed will give me lambda to the zero. So this will be homogeneous with degree zero. Uh, feel free to run through it if you don't believe me. Um, but we're just going to get started on how what we should do. So I said to make the substitution y is equal to ux. And then because I have my dy dx given to me explicitly in this formula, I'm going to go ahead and say dy dx is equal to u plus x du dx. Great. So just make that substitution everywhere that you see. Everywhere you see a y, stick in a ux. Everywhere you see a dy dx, stick in a u plus x du dx. So this is 3x cubed minus x times quantity ux squared divided by 3x squared quantity ux plus quantity ux cubed times dy dx, that's just u plus x du dx 
is equal to 1. Great. This may look a little bit more complicated, but as we group together our du's and our dx's, we'll see that this just becomes a separable equation, which is something that we know how to do. And so that's kind of what we want to deal with instead of what we had earlier. So the denominator, I'm going to go ahead and multiply it through so that it's on the other hand, on the right hand side, so I can uh, factor or expand the left hand side out. And so that'll give me 3x cubed minus, I'm going to go ahead and expand this uh, power of 2. This is going to give me minus u squared x cubed times u plus x du dx is equal to, okay, and then multiply the denominator through. It's just the one on the right-hand side, so it'll be exactly what's on uh, the denominator. I'm going to go ahead and multiply what's on the bottom to get 3ux cubed plus u cubed x cubed. Great. Then, down here, I'm going to want to expand this uh, or foil out what's right here. And so this will give me, so this will be 3, this is still going to be 3x cubed here. And then the first term will give me minus u cubed x cubed, right? And then same thing with the, oh, wait, hold on, I forgot something. In front of here should be a u, 3 u x cubed. Great. Okay, so all of this first part has been multiplied onto u plus x du dx. Great. And then the second part is going to give me plus 3x4 du dx. And then the second part will give me minus u squared x to the 4 du dx, and then that's equal to whatever we had on our right-hand side, 3u x cubed plus u cubed x cubed. All right, good. So this is getting more and more expanded, but for a good reason. Now from here, since I told you this is going to become separable, the next thing to do would be to multiply throughout by dx, so that I have functions that are attached to my du's and functions that are tied to my dx's. So, doing that, I'll get a 3, 3u three x cubed dx minus u cubed x cubed dx plus 3x to the 4 du minus u squared x to the 4 du is equal to, and I'll go ahead and start factoring this out a little bit. Both of these terms have an x cubed, so x cubed times 3u plus u cubed dx. Okay, good. Now, I have things that are attached to du's, these two terms, and I have terms that are attached to dx's, which are these two terms. So let's get them uh, with each other in order to solve this. So, if I move these two terms right here to the right hand side so that they're with dx, um, I'll only have these two terms, uh, these last two terms on the left hand side that are attached to du's, and you'll see that they both have a x to the 4 component. So I'll factor that out. x to the 4 times 3 minus u squared times du will equal, I'll have this, I still have this x cubed, 3u plus u cubed, and now I want to subtract all of this, right, so that it goes over here, right, so that'll give me a minus, and notice this also has an x cubed that can be pulled out, it's pretty important, minus x cubed of 3u uh, plus u cubed, and all of this, dx. Right? Oh, that's a, that's a minus sign. Sorry. This is a minus here. Good. So then, coming down more and simplifying, we'll get x to the 4 times 3 minus u squared 
du is equal to, okay, so x cubed 3u minus x cubed 3u, these are just going to go away, x cubed u cubed minus minus x cubed 3 cubed will give me an x cubed times a 2u cubed dx. Great, this is looking more and more separable, right? So now we're in a good spot of we can put all our u's and du's and x's and dx's on one side, which is what we want. So this is now 3 minus u squared divided by 2u cubed du is equal to x cubed over x to the 4 dx. Great, this is looking very nice. Um, from here, because I'm getting ready to integrate, I like to write these integrals like this. I'm going to go ahead and write the left hand side as 3 halves over u cubed minus 1 half over u du. And then over here, this is just going to be 1 over x dx. Now, this is a pretty important tip. On the right hand side, with it's only a function of x. Um, if you don't get something that's either 1 over x or minus 1 over x, you did the problem wrong. You have to, when you integrate the right hand side of, or wherever your x's and your dx's are, if you don't get a natural log of x, you did something wrong. So keep that in mind. It has to reduce down to one of the cases of 1 over x or minus 1 over x. So now we're in a good spot to integrate this. These are just power rules and uh, integrating in order to get natural log. So this one right here is going to produce 3 halves right, times minus 1 half u to the minus 2. The second term over here is minus 1 half ln u. So keep in mind I'm integrating right now. And then this will give me natural log of x plus c. Right? No, you're not done. You need to back substitute. So remember, we had that y is equal to ux. Therefore, u is equal to y over x. Right? So back substituting and looking at this equation, we're going to get minus 3 fourths u to the minus 2. So if u is y over x, then u to the minus 1 is x over y. So this is just going to be quantity x over y squared minus 1 half ln of u, and my u is y over x, so plug that in, y over x is equal to ln of x plus c. And that is your final answer. I don't expect you to simplify that any further. And that's it. That's how you proceed with these. They can be a little long, um, but as you can see from all the steps of derivation, it's pretty methodical. The end goal is trying to get to a separable equation that you can solve. And so as long as you're organized and you make sure you don't mess up signs, which I still have to be careful of as well, so don't feel bad about that, you should be able to arrive at the final answer. And it should be as easy as integrating something like this over here. So next video we'll deal with uh, Bernoulli's equations, and that's another um, substitution method. And with that, I believe we finished this first unit of ODE. So thank you for watching.